Kip Washington. When it comes to information, the man got an arsenal. Bring you up to speed with what you need. He's the local and nationwide news feed. Let's talk about it. Dialect to do something about it. Chip got the pro wide open. If you got questions about it, man, it's the show that brings you to your raw. To solve all problems, it starts with real talk. It's real talk. And here we go. Here we go on this 30th day of October 2023, 6 o'clock straight up. That means it's time for Real Talk Memphis. Welcome in. Welcome in. I uh, hope you uh, can hang with us for the next hour. We have a pretty good show for you tonight. Uh, we are very happy to have you uh, with us as always. It's cold. Uh, just, just in case you... You hadn't been outside all day. Let me just tell you, it's cold. It's cold. Uh, last week, we were in the mid-80s each and every day. Uh, they said the bottom was going to drop out today, and boy, did it. It has not been out of the 40s all afternoon long. A brisk breeze, and yeah, it's time to get the jackets and the layers and the whatever else, uh, the scarves and hats and whatever else makes you warm. Now, uh, we're going to have a very cold night tonight. A freeze warning is in effect. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this tonight and into tomorrow and tomorrow night as well. Uh, this is the day before Halloween, which means uh, for all you ghouls and goblins out there, a big or little, uh, you may want to uh, throw some layers on uh, tonight uh, as you uh, hit the streets because or tomorrow night as you hit the streets because it is going to be uh, quite the chill in the air. If I didn't introduce myself, uh, my name is Chip Washington. I am the uh, humble one, the host of this show. Uh, very happy to be here with uh, all of you uh, this evening. Whether you are watching uh, on Facebook Live, whether you are listening to us on the radio or on computer or however you're getting us, we are very happy uh, that you are out there uh, as well. Uh, before we get started, how do you get this fine piece of radio broadcasting? Well, I'm always glad when you ask that question. Uh, you can do it a number of ways. Of course, we are live right now on WYXR 91.7 on your FM dial. You can also catch us uh, on the uh, TuneIn app, WYXR.org. Uh, uh, oh, let's see. Yes, yeah, a TuneIn, right? You also have Facebook. Facebook, we are uh, live streaming the show on Facebook Live this evening. Uh, and tomorrow, once they post the finished show, you can catch us on YouTube. And, of course, wherever it is you get your podcast. So, uh, welcome in, welcome in. Look, it's too cold to be hanging around outside. So, you might as well just get home, turn the heat on, sit in front of the fireplace if that's your thing. Uh, you know, you can pick up your social, uh, the, your, 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 your portable device, your phone, or whatever it is you use to... Uh, to connect with the outside world, connect with us for the next uh, hour uh, or so, because as I said before, we have a great show in store for you tonight. Now, I will tell you that I, uh, my news and notes have just disappeared. I have no idea where they are, and I don't know what happened, but I know I had them earlier, but they're not here. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to muddle through uh, in, 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 in the meantime here. But I will tell you this. Uh, normally, right around the top of this show, I always uh, celebrate the birthdays, whether they were over the weekend, whether they were yesterday, today, this week. But I can't find my list, so I, <laughs> so I don't, I don't, I, I can't do that tonight. So I don't have to say hit it, Bryn. But I will tell you this: if you have celebrated a birthday recently, or you're celebrating one today, uh, from all of us here, we uh, are glad you made another trip around the sun. Uh, and uh, we hope to be here next year to celebrate another trip around the sun or your next trip around the sun. By that time, I will find a list and I will have my list. of it. Oh, oh, actually, Lola, 
You know the star of Level Lola, the show that comes on before us each and every night? She actually has a birthday. Lola, it's on you. I have a Halloween birthday. Oh, no. What's, what's, what's happening? Happy there? birthday, T. Alice. T. Love you much. T. Alice is T. a... T. Alice. She's a Halloween baby. She's a Halloween baby. All right, then. All right. Well, happy birthday to you, T. Alice. We appreciate it. And each and every one of you out there who has been celebrating... Uh, viciously for the next uh, for the last uh, two or three days. Guests tonight on the show uh, include uh, our first guest who will be with us in just a few minutes. Her name is Kimberly Gaither, and uh, we are honoring Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, I'm always bound and determined to get these things in when I can, and uh, we do have a guest uh, this evening. Uh, Kimberly is a breast cancer survivor more than once she's actually diagnosed with something called triple negative breast cancer uh, which is a pretty aggressive uh, form of breast cancer affecting women younger than the age of 40. so she'll come on in just a few minutes and uh, share her struggle uh, and her courage and her survival we look forward to hearing her story of course a little bit later on we're going to be talking to an organization. I, I'll be honest with you, I've never heard of them. I didn't hear of them until very recently. Somebody brought it to my attention. Vintage 901. What is that you are asking? Well, it's a nonprofit organization that promotes access to the culinary arts, cooking through education, enrichment, and community engagement. Now, we're going to have uh, their CEO. Her name is Stephanie Ferreira. Uh, she will be joining us uh, in just a little bit to talk about an annual brunch uh, that is going to be happening here pretty soon. Uh, But the reason for that brunch is uh, to help students who are interested in becoming uh, the future chefs of America by offering a scholarship award. And, you know, I like stuff like that. So we're going to be talking to Stephanie about that a little bit later on. And in the second half hour, uh, filmmaking is a big deal. Uh, filmmaking and filmmakers uh, here, a uh, big deal here in the city of Memphis and, of course, uh, all over the country and all over the world. Well, I have a young man who will be joining me in the second half hour uh, who has his own production company. He has uh, done a couple of films. He's uh, in production on a film right now that he will talk about uh, in just a little bit. Uh, but more importantly, uh, you know, in all of this, he wants to teach young people the art of producing and filmmaking so they can fulfill their dreams as well. His name is Robert Salone. Uh, He will be joining me in the uh, second half hour of the show. So there you go. Very happy uh, to have all of them with us. Uh, And, uh, you know, like I said before, it's going to be a it's going to be a great show uh, tonight. So a few news and notes uh, off the top of my head. Uh, You know, there was a there was a tragic house fire this morning in uh, Whitehaven, Uh, two elderly women. Uh, one in her 60s and the other one in her 80s, uh, unfortunately did not survive the fire. Uh, It was not intentional, according to fire officials. It was electrical in nature, uh, but two, uh, these uh, these people uh, perished. Um, hmm. One of my guests just texted me and said they didn't get their info uh, about how to log in uh, here uh, to join... Uh, check your junk email. Uh, if you can hear me, Kimberly, this is Kimberly. Go to your junk email uh, or go to your spam email and you'll see an email from Ayana. Uh, and that will tell you what time you need to log in. I think, I, I, who, isn't that her logged in at the top there? Huh? Oh, no, that's okay. She's way early. Okay, yeah. Huh? It says Real Talk Memphis in the subject line, Kimberly, so hopefully you can find it. Um, also, uh, it's, been a, it's been a tough weekend uh, in, in the city uh, in terms of violent episodes. Uh, we had four people dead, uh, eight people shot. Uh, this afternoon, two women who were standing in front of a fire station uh, on Winchester Road were shot just about an hour ago, uh, one of them in critical condition. So, you know, the beat goes on and on and on and on around here uh, in terms of, uh, you know, where we are last week. Uh, Many of you uh, heard about uh, the incident that happened behind a courtroom uh, as uh, uh, individuals who had been arrested were about to make their first court appearance. They were in a holding cell behind uh, a court, uh, the courtroom, uh, and uh, two individuals got into a verbal beef. One spit on the other one. Uh, The uh, suspect pulled uh, what appeared to be a shank. Uh, and stabbed uh, the victim in the neck. Uh, That victim did not survive, 
Uh, so we have a, yet another incident uh, that has happened at the 201 Poplar uh, regarding the Shelby County Sheriff's Office, and uh, that, of course, will be investigated. The individual uh, suspect who stabbed the individual in question uh, has now been charged with uh, first-degree murder. Over the weekend, Gershon Freeman's family filed a $100 million lawsuit uh, against uh, Shelby County, uh, Sheriff Floyd Bonner, and Chief Jailer Kirk Fields. Uh, on behalf, we all know about what happened uh, to Gershon Freeman, uh, who was having a, a, a mental episode uh, inside the jail. Uh, you know, he was being chased, and uh, several officers uh, in the pursuit of trying to pursue him uh, he ended up dying uh, after that. So his family is, you know, there are so many lawsuits being filed on behalf of uh, individuals who are no longer with us uh, against the city of Memphis, uh, the Memphis Police Department, uh, individuals in question uh, that were responsible for the murder of uh, Tyree Nichols. Uh, and now you have uh, eight or nine individuals uh, who had been charged in the death of Gershon Freeman. Two of those individuals actually charged with second-degree murder in addition to aggravated assault. So there's a lot, I mean, really, there's a lot going on. So now you have, uh, you have civil suits for, from the city, uh, toward the city, uh, toward the county, toward individuals in question uh, in all of these cases. And, 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 and God only knows what's going to happen uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, what else is coming down the road. Uh, I... Our mayor-elect is going to have a lot on his plate. And the questions are already starting. Well, what are we going to do about crime? What are we going to do about crime? You know, how are we going to deal with the issues that, at hand? Uh, you know, I have said repeatedly uh, on this show and other places that if you have no deterrent for crime, you will always have crime. And if these individuals uh, go in jail one day after committing serious crimes in this city and are bailed out the next, I mean, how's anybody going to learn a lesson here? Somebody has to stand up and say something about what is happening out here. Uh, and more importantly, rather than stand, do something about what is happening out here. We have to take responsibility for, for, what has, for what is taking place out here. And nobody seems to be doing that these days, and it's a bit, uh, it's a bit frustrating uh, in terms of all of that. Uh, on the Facebook Live line, uh, several folks out there, Michael Harris, uh, Connie May is watching us uh, uh, GKP, uh, Jay Worth is watching us tonight as well. Uh, and uh, so I appreciate all of you. We're going to take our first break of the night. And when we come back, uh, we're going to hopefully get into the show and talk to uh, Kimberly Gaither. She is a breast cancer survivor. And if she's listening to us, uh, you can go in your junk mail, uh, subject line, Real Talk Memphis, and it will tell you you're up first, by the way. Uh, but if not, I'll switch things around. Is she there? All right, very good. She is there. So let's take our first break of the evening. Sit back, relax, get warm, get comfortable, and prepare for a great Real Talk Memphis. I'm Chip. You know who you are. We'll be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. WYXR's biggest annual event is back. Raised by SoundFest is Saturday, December 2nd at Crosstown Concourse. Sponsored by Mempho Presents. Free live music all day long featuring Bass Drum of Death, AJ Haynes, Rod Smoth, Rosie, Madam Frankie, and the U of M Blue Tom Review. Capped off with two fundraising events. Cat Power sings Dylan, the 1966 Royal Albert Hall Concert at Crosstown Theater, and the DJ After Party with Alex Brown at Crosstown Arts Green Room. Get details about the fest and tickets to fundraising events at RaisedbySoundFest.com. 
Acoustic Sunday Live, now in its third decade, is proud to support WYXR and to present the concert to protect our aquifer, taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd at First Congo Church, located at 1000 Cooper Street. Performances include Shamika Copeland, Tracy Nelson, Tim O'Brien with Jan Fabricus, Loudon Wainwright III, and special guests. More information at 901-237-2972 or AcousticSundayLive.com. Church House Memphis Plan continues its decades-long commitment to serving local musicians with comprehensive health care and also tailors its focus to small business owners and the self-employed. Health care through the Memphis Plan provides care in Memphis for Memphians. Related services include preventative health, optometry, dental care, and more. More information regarding availability at memphisplan.org or at 901-272-PLAN. You're listening, but are you in the know? The WYXR Weekly Newsletter is the best source for keeping up with events at WYXR, whether they are happening on our airwaves, behind the scenes, or out in the community. Log on to newsletter.wyxr.org to sign up for our mailing list and keep yourself in the loop. WYXR doesn't go to sleep at night. We keep the music moving. Memphis music, that is. When our DJs clock out, our automation clocks in with music right from our community. Produced, performed, and written by Memphians. Or in Memphis. Some are hits, and some are rarely heard. But they all tell the story of one of the world's greatest music cities. Visit WYXR.org for playlist and scheduling information. Email submissions at WYXR.org to let us hear your Memphis music. We may just play it. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this Monday evening in the city of cold, chilly, raw Monday evening in the city. Chip, with you. Glad to have you with us. Also glad to have my first guest. As I said, uh, we were wrapping up sort of the, uh, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month uh, as we uh, deal with that every October. There are thousands of women uh, and even some men out there who deal with breast cancer issues uh, each and every year. And I always would like, I always want to have somebody on the show who can speak to it uh, from a, from a, uh, a an original place. And my first guest uh, can do that. Her name is Kimberly Gaither. And uh uh, she is a breast cancer survivor. First of all, Kim, uh, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, great to see you, uh, and, and thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So, you know, uh, I, I want people to to understand uh, your story, and you and I talked a little bit offline about all of this, and you have really uh, gone through uh, some, I would say, some very interesting trials. Uh, if you would, uh, if you wouldn't mind sharing your, your story. Now, you, you, you're one of those folks that have, as I, as I alluded to at the beginning, uh, it's, it's uh, triple negative uh, breast cancer. Yes. Uh, for those of us who don't know or understand what that means, please explain that to us. So I am, I've been diagnosed three times with triple negative breast cancer, invasive ductal carcinoma. That is one of the most, well, it's considered the most aggressive form of breast cancer. And that means that it reacts to nothing. It reacts to no hormones, um, estrogen. It it doesn't react to anything but chemo and surgery. So when they told me that I was diagnosed with it originally, they told me that they would have to treat it very aggressively. Mm -hmm. And they did with some of the strongest chemotherapy that there is out there. Um, As a matter of fact, my hair started falling out after my first dose of chemo. Wow. That is uh, that in and of itself. And you said uh, diagnosed not once, not twice, but three times with this. Yes, three times. And uh, obviously uh, one of the most aggressive forms of it. Did you uh, did you uh, have any uh, issues uh, at all in terms of 
uh, sort of self-doubt in terms of kind of, uh, you know, your survival in all of this? You seem like a very young woman, but I mean, obviously hearing that type of news and understanding what you would have had to have gone through uh, in order to try to save your life. I mean, did you have any doubts through this period of time at all? So initially, when the day that I got the diagnosis, I cried like a baby. Um, so much so that I was with my mom and she brought me home to my dad and he was rocking me like a baby and just told me that I was not about to die from cancer. So, you know, we were getting ready to fight mm -hmm. and that's what I did. So immediately it, it almost just felt like something dried everything up in me. And I was like, okay, it's time to fight. And I knew that I could beat it. I knew that it was very aggressive. I knew that what they were saying about it. I was 39 at the time. Mm. And it was the very beginning of COVID. So it was March 19th of 2020 oh, when boy. everything was shutting down. Oh man. I was being diagnosed with breast cancer. But I felt like that was at first I was like, oh, this is gonna be bad because everything is shutting down and you know we're so unsure but that it was actually a good time to be diagnosed because everything was shutting down and i was missing out on nothing mm. so no one was having any parties that i couldn't go to okay. because of breast cancer so i was excited about this okay <laughs> well you know i mean you know given that and given the timing for everything uh you know you 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 went through initial treatment now let me ask you uh, because uh, uh if, if i'm if i'm correct uh, most of uh, the individuals who uh, get breast cancer, uh, it's hereditary. Uh, so is there is there a history of breast cancer in your family? So I do have an aunt that passed away from breast cancer mm. about nine years ago, mm. but it doesn't run in my family. Um, I was tested for the gene, the BRCA gene that says whether or not it's hereditary or whether or not your family, your mom, right. your brother, sisters, dad need to get tested. And I tested negative mm. and was given a less than 5% chance of recurrence when I first had my double mastectomy and got, went through all of the chemotherapy. So you were you were initially diagnosed, I guess it was in 2020, I guess, right? Is that the first? Mm -hmm. And so when was the next, when, 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 did, when did it come back? So March of 2020 was the first diagnosis. Right. Um, December of 2020 was the second diagnosis. And it was because um, I, had, I initially had three tumors in my breast and they biopsied and marked them. But when the doctor did my double mastectomy, he left a tumor behind. Mm. So I ended up having to go back through everything all over again. But this time I had to do radiation surgery radiation and chemotherapy that time oh wow and the the the, the third incidence of this so was, was the when? third incident was the day after my birthday this year it was it was january 17 2023 oh wow that was my most recent breast cancer diagnosis so you had to go through the same type of treatment sounds like it was pretty harsh Yes, it was. It was pretty harsh. I had to go through about four months of chemotherapy. Since I had radiation, the second time I was diagnosed, the doctor didn't want to do more radiation mm. because I had about 30 rounds of radiation that time. So mm. they didn't want to radiate that area anymore. But I did have surgery. I had four months of chemotherapy. And now I'm still doing immunotherapy. I'll be doing that for a year. And that's an, an injection that kind of has your body fighting against the cancer, but it can also fight against your organs and things that you need. So I see the doctor every three weeks to make sure that I'm still cancer free and that my organs and other things are failing. So is that, I mean, are we good with that in terms of uh, the, the other organs and things like that? Oh yeah, I'm great. Wow. I'm great. I feel great. Um, I don't have any issues. When I go to the doctor every three weeks, I get a really good diagnosis. Um, my blood work looks great. Labs are great. Well, bless you. That, that That's absolutely uh, amazing to have to go through that uh, at, at such a young age. And uh, clearly, uh, you, you seem to be doing well. You look great. Uh, you look into you. I mean, from what I can see. And, Thank uh, you. And you sound very upbeat and enthusiastic as well. Uh, but you have a story to tell, and I'm sure that you have told it, and I'm sure that you have shared it with many people. What 
would you like people to know uh, about the importance of uh, checking yourself or getting checked uh, for breast cancer, uh, especially if you're if you come from a family uh, history of that? I mean, what what kind of message uh, you know would you would you like to share with with individuals in terms of what you have gone through? Well, my main message is that positivity is medicine. Uh, the doctors can do all that they can do, but if you are not positive about your journey, it's not going to be a good journey for you. I went through breast cancer with a breeze. The The treatment was hard. It's cancer. It's cancer treatment. Sure. But, but it was some of the best times of my life that I have in, uh, endured cancer. I have been able to go to all my chemotherapy appointments with my dad. So I had a chance to get closer to my dad, my family. We have dinner every single Sunday. So they are able to lay eyes on me and make sure that I am still good and beating cancer. And I was able to lay eyes on them. So number one is positivity is medicine. Two, have a really good village around you. Mm -hmm. And then three, make sure that you advocate for yourself. Because the second time that I was diagnosed with breast cancer, the doctor was saying that it was possibly scar tissue that I was feeling. And I didn't want to go with a, po a probably or a possibly because I was already a cancer patient. Yeah. So I made sure that I advocated and I would not take no for an answer. I demanded that they biopsy that lump and it was actually the tumor that he left behind. Mm. So it's very important to, to advocate for yourself and then really also know your body. I was standing in the airport and I just put my hands under my arms because I was cold and I felt the lump and I knew that it hadn't been there for a long time because I do my own exams often. Mm -hmm. So you definitely need to know your body because you don't know what changes have happened or when the change happened unless you check your body and you can tell your doctor what's going on and when it happened. Mm -hmm. And obviously, uh, the thing that we hear uh, the most uh, is uh, uh, go get a mammogram. Go get your mammogram. It is extraordinarily important. There's still a lot of people, that women, that just don't do that. But, I mean, based on everything you've just said, that, that has to be probably the most important. Yes, it's, it's very important. However, a lot of the people that I've met since I've been diagnosed were under the age of 40. So our first mammograms was, were the diagnostic mammogram after we had already been diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm. So that's something that if you have it in your family, I would suggest that you advocate and ask the doctor to do a mammogram before 40. But you really need to, at 40, start doing the mammograms to make sure that you catch anything that might be lingering. Well, listen, uh, I, I am just uh, uh, extraordinarily uh, happy for you, and uh, mm -hmm. you, 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 you're, you're a fighter. There's no doubt about that, uh, and oh, yeah. I think you will continue to fight. The picture that you sent me that is on Facebook for anybody who didn't see it, you know, is, is you standing there with, with that, with that, there it is, that's the shot right there. And I said to myself, okay, yeah, this one here has got some fight in her, no doubt about that. Oh, uh, yeah. Absolutely. But Kimberly, thank you so much for, for coming on the show and for sharing your story. And, uh, and I'm hoping that uh, people that listen to this um, uh, will, will get something from it and more importantly, learn uh, the importance of uh, uh, making sure uh, that you examine yourself uh, and, uh, uh, and more importantly, if you need to be treated, get treated. Kimberly Gaither, thank yes. you so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate you. Thank you for having me. All right. Take care of yourself. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. That Now, that is a survivor story if I've ever heard one. And again, uh, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And mammograms, mammograms, mammograms. Uh, get your mammograms. And yes, this is not just something... Although it does affect predominantly affect women, uh, men have been known to be diagnosed with breast cancer as well. Uh, so, uh, fellas, uh, you know, if you notice something that's a bit abnormal uh, in that area, go get it checked, all right, and go get it looked at. Man, that was a great interview. I really appreciate that. We're going to take another break, and when we come back, uh, we're going to talk, we're going to shift gears a little bit and talk about uh, uh, folks who have aspirations. If you've ever watched uh, shows like uh, with Gordon Ramsay, like Hell's Kitchen uh, and, 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 and those type of contests, that's kind of what this is kind of what this is all about, the culinary world. We'll talk about it when we come back on the other side. Uh, this is Real Talk Memphis. I'm Chip. We'll be right back.
If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. WYXR is supported by Mempho, presenting Green Sky Bluegrass at Minglewood Hall on Thursday, November 16th. This is an all-ages show and will include an opening set by Lindsay Liu. Ticket information and availability at MemphoPresents.com. Support for WYXR comes from New Ballet Ensemble and School. Nut Remix is back at the Cannon Center, November 17th, 18th, and 19th. A modern reinvention of Tchaikovsky's classic Nutcracker, set on Bill Street with the Memphis Symphony Orchestra and Jilkin dancer Lil Buck. More information at newballet.org. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to the show on uh, this uh, chilly Monday evening, uh, Real Talk Memphis with Chip. And, of course, uh, uh, we talked about it before the break. Oh, and before that, uh, in my last interview, uh, Lola was looking at my hands, and she said it looked like I was working on cars in the cove. So she, she, she gave me some some cream. I had to use some hand cream here during the break to try to, <laughs> to, try to loosen things up. Uh, but we were talking about... The, the culinary world, people who are interested in cooking and learning, uh, uh, you know, about that, 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 wonderful, that wonderful business. And so it was brought to my attention uh, about an organization out here uh, that uh, is, is doing something to help young minds who might be in that direction. It is called Vintage 901. It's a nonprofit organization that promotes access uh, to the culinary arts through education, enrichment, and community engagement. And I wanted to find out more about this. Uh, so uh, we are very happy to have Stephanie Ferreira. Uh, uh, Stephanie, now, for, uh, did I pronounce your last name right? Is it Ferreira? Absolutely. You I did great. it. Look at that. Yes. Ste- Stephanie is the founder and CEO of Vintage 901. And, St- and Stephanie, it's great to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you so much, Chip. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. So, so listen, uh, for those of us who are, who are not familiar, tell us a little bit about Vintage 901 and what it's all about. Well, um, the way that it started, Chip, uh, Vintage 901 is a 501c3 mm-hmm. uh, that was started to be, you know, what we wanted to do was to be able to bring education wine and food education to Memphis and to open that up to, uh, I guess you say, all factions of people, just not people that might be connoisseurs or aficionados, Mm -hmm. that it would be for the curious or people that uh, wanted to learn a little bit more about things like wine pairings and what foods to uh, actually pair with a particular type of wine, or even interested in knowing more about the terroir, how grapes, things like that are grown. And so from that, from that uh, start that we had in 2017, we've kind of bridged, I guess you say, into looking at it more holistically mm-hmm. in that this is a multi-billion dollar industry yeah. with a lot of underserved groups right now that are not part of this industry at all. Well, that's very interesting. And, and, and that in and of itself is very interesting to me. Now, uh, you have decided at some particular point in time uh, to support young people. Uh, because as you said, it's a it's a multi billion dollar industry, and and you're not only teaching them, uh, you know, a, about the fine side of dining and things like that, preparing them for that. Uh, why may why why did you decide to start a, a scholarship? Because uh, the the basis of all of this is uh, that you are going to provide students, high school, and I think college with an opportunity 
to get a scholarship award for those who are interested in pursuing a degree in culinary arts. That really attracted me to what it is you're trying to do here. Well, I think that you you know, as well as many people know, education is expensive. Yes. It and is. it's becoming more and more elusive in um, just within our community. And so everyone is not going to go to school chill to, let's just say, be a hedge fund manager mm. or uh, a doctor or a lawyer or those types of things. There are a lot of other skill sets and opportunities to have a really good life for young people. And what I think our team was seeing over and over again is we were doing our events. The people who were coming to the table in a lot of cases particularly in the wine and spirits industry. They just weren't looking like us. Mm -hmm. And so those are the things that we wanted to work on. Well, that that in and of itself is something you're teaching uh, young people, uh, you know, uh, heading them in a career that, that, that could really be beneficial uh, to them uh, in the future. Now, you have uh, an, 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 I believe it's an annual event uh, that that is that is coming up. Uh, you have one coming up here in another another couple of weeks uh, uh, in uh, November. Am I correct in that? You are correct. Usually what we do is anywhere from. I would say three to probably six events a year. Now, COVID did kind of hamper that right. some of them, okay? Mm -hmm. But uh, we will have a perfect pairings brunch. Again, every event that we have, Chip, has the education component to it, meaning someone's going to walk out with more knowledge uh, leaving out of the door than they actually came in with. We have sommeliers that are on site. We have also the wonderful thing in the culinary arts is um, like with this brunch and dinners that we have, the chefs that actually uh, prepare these dinners and these meals and these brunches and things like that will actually educate the uh, guests uh, okay. on how it was prepared, where the product came from, because you got a couple of things going on here uh, before you get food to the consumer. So we want to be able to educate people on that too, the farms and the different chicories and things like that where products are coming from. So, you, so basically what you're saying, there's a lot, more that goes into all of this, the, the learning, the preparation, the training, uh, and, and everything else. And, and it sounds like with each event that you're having, uh, you're providing uh, an education uh, for folks. Now, when is the, uh, the, the next brunch and, and where is it going to be? It will be um, on November, Sunday, November the 12th um, at the Lobbyist, which is on Main Street in the Chiska Hotel down in the lobby and uh that brunch is from 11 30 to 2 o'clock p.m and this particular event specifically benefits this scholarship for the students the event that we do in the fall uh I'm curious, uh, Stephanie, uh, in, in terms of, of this, and, and we talked about the cost of education, but I'm, I'm more interested in the, the, the interest level of these students. Are you finding, uh, as, you, as you go along with, 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 with what you're trying to do here, uh, that there is a genuine uh, curiosity, that there is a genuine interest uh, from young people who may be aspiring to be the next uh, great uh, chefs uh, in, in, this, uh, in this world? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I where I, I guess what we're seeing, basically, you got programs already set up, uh, Chip. I don't know if you know this uh, or not, at schools like East High School. I did not where, know that. I did not know. Yeah, yeah, where they're actually uh, curating and cultivating, in many cases, a program for young culinary artists That's who will go on to a place like Southwest and they will train under people like Stephen Leak at Southwest. And then from Southwest, they will go on to University of Memphis to get their four-year degree. So it's many, uh, I guess what you say, a way of matriculation yeah. that these students can go. Yes, sir. 
This is really, now see, this is the kind of thing uh, that, uh, you know, clearly we need more of. Uh, you have shared that uh, uh, East High School is being involved in it. Uh, I, I, I take it you would like to see more schools uh, uh, offer programs like this to, uh, to these young folks? Absolutely. Yes, I think that this is something that could be equitable in some cases uh, with what you're seeing with programs through more tick. I'm just using something like that, for instance, sure. where people are, the, the young people are being taught welding or aircraft maintenance sure. or TCAT, different programs like that. If they were doing something like this that um, was edifying um, young folks, I think they absolutely would, you know, go this route. Well, I gotta be honest. This is uh, this is an, uh, a, an incredible program, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And you're opening up uh, a window of opportunity uh, to young folks uh, you know, who 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 may not have thought about it initially, but are thinking about it more now. And they could be the next great chefs uh, to come out of Memphis, Tennessee. And and I really applaud you uh, f for your efforts here in, in terms of this. Uh, and what your organization uh, is doing. Uh, let us know one more time, uh, Stephanie, about the brunch, when it is and uh, where it is, and if people want more information about how they can uh, be a part of it, the uh, floor is yours. Okay, I appreciate it, Chip. Uh, the brunch will be November the 12th, um, and it will be at the lobbyist. Um, it will be the first event going into our spring event which will actually be here April 20th and the 21st. We have three days of events that we're actually fundraising, Chip, just so you know that. Mm -hmm. uh, our event in April, on April 20th, which we do a grand tasting, which tends to be one of our largest events. Mm -hmm. It brings anywhere from, you know, seven to 800 people oh, wow. uh, a year. And so uh, it's a very fun event and it's an educational event. Uh, that particular um uh the grand tasting will be at the medicine factory this year we always like to go to interesting places that maybe people have never been before yeah and then we'll have something called a sparkling brunch that following day which will be at the fedex event center Sounds amazing. Absolutely amazing. And listen, again, uh, congratulations to you. I salute you for what you're doing uh, to try to improve young minds and, uh, and open up the, uh, the wonderful world of the culinary arts uh, uh, to so many. Stephanie Pereira, thank you uh, for, for coming on the show tonight. Vintage 901, ladies and gentlemen, and participate in this. Uh, get involved in this because you're not only helping uh, you're not only uh, being, you know, uh, giving good food, good drink, the whole nine yards, but you're participating and helping young minds, and that's what it's all about. Stephanie, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Chip. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank la you. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephanie Ferreira, I, 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 you know what? Vintage 901, doing things, doing big things out there for the young people out there uh, who have dreams of being the next the big chef. And, uh, you know, look. Uh, we're not going to be here forever. We need to learn and cultivate uh, the next generation. I always say that, always say that. So anytime somebody is doing something like this, this is a big deal uh, as far as I'm concerned. And I hope that uh, a lot of folks uh, who may be listening to this or checking us out tonight, if you know somebody who's interested in that world, you know, hit them up. Tell them, look, you know, Vintage 901, something you might want to look into. Uh, excellent interview there. We're going to take our final break of the broadcast, and uh, hopefully on the other side we will have, we'll talk a little bit about film and filmmaking and what is involved in that. And uh, my next guest uh, has always uh, uh, thought about other folks as well in terms of training and teaching and, uh, and exposing them uh, to this uh, particular uh, effort. This is Real Talk Memphis for a chilly Monday evening in Memphis. We'll be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest? 
or have a guest idea. Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. WYXR is supported by Memphis Presents and GPAC, presenting Victor Wooten and the Wooten Brothers on Friday, November 3rd. The Wooten Brothers combine the talents of bassist Victor Wooten, Steve Miller Band keyboardist Joseph Wooten, guitarist Reggie Wooten, and drummer Roy Futureman Wooten. More information available at gpacweb.com. At WYXR, we are committed to uplifting local organizations and businesses who are making an impact in Memphis. If you are looking for ways to spread the word about your business on air and want to support WYXR at the same time, email us at sponsorships at WYXR.org. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this Monday evening. Chip with you and uh, very happy to have you along uh, with us uh, this evening as well. Uh, You know, uh, there are, uh, the arts uh, comprises a lot. There's a lot that goes into the arts. And uh, one of the things I think people uh, enjoy most out there uh, is the art of films and filmmaking. And, you know, we just had a, uh, you know, I, I think we just had something here in, in, in reference to films here in our city. Uh, but um, I wanted to talk a little bit about this because uh, this young man uh, who I'm, I'm about to bring on uh, has been a filmmaker for quite some time. He's uh, got, a, uh, got a project out he'll talk about in a minute uh, that you can actually see, uh, you know, on, uh, on one, of the, one of these, you know, I don't know what you call it, streaming services or w- what have you. And he's in the middle of a, a current production uh, uh, as well. Uh, he is Robert Salone, and he joins me now. And uh, full disclosure, He's my cousin, so it is good to see you. Uh, he was talking about football during the break, and uh, he's a big Minnesota Viking fan. But my friend, it's great to see you, cuz, and uh, how are you tonight? I'm doing really well tonight, and thanks for uh, having me on your show. It's exciting to be here. Well, look, man, uh, I, I, I'm glad you can make it. So, so first of all, uh, talk to me about filmmaking and the desire to do it and how you got into this in the first place. Have you always been interested in, 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 in film and filmmaking and everything that goes into it? I mean, how did all this start? Well, that's an that's a interesting story because when I was growing up in Minneapolis, um, you know, you take field trips when you're in like the fifth and sixth grade to go to different zoos and stuff. Sure. Well, in Minneapolis, there's a place called the Guthrie Theater. And they, took our class down there one day and they had um, some uh, an exhibit called The History of Film. And they showed all types of movies and stuff like that. And, you know, the um, all different stars from the silent era, um, Alfred Hitchcock. And, 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 you know, I was like, wow, that's something that I would love to be able to do. But there was no, you know, black role models at that time that for kids to look up and say, I could do that, mm-hmm. right? Or, that there was even an avenue, how would you fund it, you know, but everybody goes to the movies. So, you know, but I guess career and all that stuff gets in the way. And, you know, it, it, it sort of put it on the back burner. But then uh, one day I met with a group of uh, like-minded filmmakers okay. at, a, at, a, at, a, at a meeting and we kind of all got together we actually left the initial group and we formed our own group called Genesis Creative Entertainment. And uh, uh, our mission is to expose young people to filmmaking and the arts. We take them through um, how to write a script, you know, because everything with uh, film starts with the story. If you've got a great story, 
you know, we can make the film part work. Sure. You know, I was looking at your uh, at your at your page, your Facebook page, and uh, right now you're in the middle uh, of the production of a movie called The Jester, uh, which is going to uh, is going to be coming out uh, next year sometime. But but I want to back to what you just you just talked about uh, teaching these young people. And I was looking at your page, and you have a lot of young folks that are working uh, on this project. Uh, you know, being a part of something that is going to be something once it's all put together. Uh, but they all look happy, and some of the comments were like, man, I'm, I'm just having a ball. I love being a part of this. I love doing this. And you have to feel good about the fact that you're not only teaching these young folks, you're exposing them as well to this business, uh, but you're teaching them, and they really seem to be enjoying themselves in that process. Uh, do they not? Well, yeah, I mean... You never know how something you'll say to a young person or you'll do with them, how that might just be the spark that they go, wow, I'd like to go out and do that. Mm -hmm. And so when they get in and they're doing it themselves, we don't really, we just provide the, the structure, but we make them write their own scripts. We make them learn about the three stages basically, which is for, you know, pre-production, production, and post-production, and with all within those three categories, there's a lot that gets done with regard to responsibilities. So it teaches them responsibilities, it teaches them a schedule, and it also gives them an opportunity to get behind the camera and have some fun. Absolutely that. Uh, so tell me now, you you have a uh, you've already got a feature that that you've completed. Uh, that, that, that's making the rounds, uh, you know, on the streaming services. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, let me give a shameless plug. You can find it on Tubi okay. and um, okay. Amazon Prime, but uh, it's called A Reflection of Evil. And a lot of the, I, I deal in a specific uh, genre, and that's um, psychological thrillers. Psychological thrillers, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, 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 I'm all, I was always a big, big Hitchcock fan, not because he tried to scare you, but just from his techniques that he used. And um, um, so the psychological thriller that um, A Reflection of Evil deal, most of my films deal with a person's inner challenges. Like if we took the guardrails off, right? And didn't like control ourselves, what would we be capable of, mm. right? How would we control ourselves? And so A Reflection of Evil is about a young lady who has a, um, when she was growing up, um, had some trauma. And, and so she created these games to deal with her trauma, but these games later turned into quite the, uh, let's say killing. <laughs> she takes, uh, she, she manipulates a lot of people. Let's just say that. Wow. So how difficult is it to, to once you've done your movie and you produced it and you got put it all, everything together, how, how difficult is it to get it on uh, one of these, uh, you know, like Tubi, you said, and, uh, and Amazon Prime? I mean, is, 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 is that a bit of a process as well to get to, to get them to accept it, to, to, to broadcast it? I, I don't know how any of that works. Well, um, you know, when you're first going through it, it, it you, that's one of the things that we offer is, you know, I've been through it, so I help others so that when they go to try to do this process, but... Um, it used to be that you have to have a representative agent or that or a lawyer that would take your film and, and market or you go through a festival and try to get your film purchased so that they can market it. Right. But um, today you have distribution 2.0, which is like Film Hub um, for people out there. And Film Hub basically is one of the largest distribu distri distribution uh, companies for films, especially independent films, uh, in the country, probably. Um, I don't know what their international market is like, but what they'll do is um, they'll take 20% of whatever the film makes once if they if they uh, if they choose it. You keep 80%. Oh, okay. And you are responsible for promoting your your film if they accept it. So what you have to do is they have. Uh, different criteria has to be at least 2k um it has to be in a certain format mm. you have to have subtitles um and if then they walk you through the process um of what you have and once it clears quality control 
then the rest is up to them. They'll get it out there. And if um, companies take a look at it, then they will sign up to license it. So, so far I've got mine on about 17 different um, streaming services. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, uh, quickly, uh, your current to production, you have already talked about psychological thrillers, and I, I, I don't have much, much time here. It's called The Jester. Uh, when, when is that going to be ready for release? That's going to be ready for release, and uh, probably in the fall. Um, we, we have one more day of uh, production, and then it's going to go into post-production. You can always uh, check out, um, you know, The Jester, um 2024 for ig and uh my website is uh two tusks films um dot com and that has um the history of my films and stuff like that and let me give a shameless plug for genesis creative entertainment group all right if you want to get involved um with a, similar um programs you know go to genesis creative uh inter- ent.org and um you know we welcome people even from different areas to we'll show them how to get a program started well man look that's great really proud of you uh and uh and and, and all of your efforts here and, and more importantly to 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 uh to engage these young minds in uh, in in something uh that is uh a fun and creative and something that uh, they can learn from and who knows they could be the next big uh, uh, director producer one day you, you never can tell uh, Robert thanks for coming on the show tonight man I was really thanks, excited thanks, to, to have you and uh, to talk about all this really appreciate your time and uh, when we get closer to the, to the film we're going to chat again okay when we get closer to I the next film release all right, man. You have a nice evening. You're right. Take care now. Thank you so much. All right, All right ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, a, a wrap on uh, what I would consider a very good show tonight. I really appreciated uh, uh, all my guests. And, uh, of course, uh, I'm going to have to go home now and, and, and check out uh, and check out Robert's first film. I'm going to have to get my own critique on all of that since he's uh, at 17 streaming services, for gosh sake. Anyway, look, it's been a great show. And uh, as always, I really appreciate you being a part of it. All of you checked us out tonight. I see Audrey Hill is on there. Denise Harden, she made it. Uh, and... Uh, Jay Worth, my guy, uh, he's uh, he's on as well. Connie May with the three hearts, I really appreciate you. Now I can't see everybody, I can't see all the, anybody else who's on here, but I really appreciate you. And as Brent plays this out, uh, I just want to say thank you uh, to each and every one of you uh, who continue to support our show. I hope that we are providing information and uh, and, and 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 talk. Uh, that you get something from. At the end of the show, uh, you say, you know what? That was a really good show. Really appreciated uh, you know, what he had on there. We try hard each and every week to bring you something that you're going to remember uh, and hopefully something that you're going to like enough to come back and visit us again. And more importantly, go out and tell somebody about what we are doing here at Real Talk Memphis. Uh, so for all of us here, for uh, Nicole, for Bryn, uh, for Lola, who's on the level right before us at 5 uh, o'clock uh, each and every Monday evening, I am Chip. Uh, you know who you are. Listen, go out and be safe. Have a wonderful week. And until next time, we are out. Real talk, real talk, real talk.